in New York, state officials say cases of COVID-19 have doubled every three days. All signs that the wave is near. As the U.S. deals with the most cases of coronavirus worldwide. You can destroy a country this way by closing it down. Gun sales around the U.S. shooting sky high. The question is, is, the question is, is the question left. Will you shut up, your, man? Listen. The wave of violence and destruction has occurred in cities exclusively controlled and dominated by the Joe Biden party. I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem. I want to begin by thanking all of the incredible medical professionals, the doctors, the nurses, everybody at Walter Reed Medical Center. We have things happening that look like they're miracles coming down from God. fake news back there. That's all. It's about the fake news media like CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, who 24 hours a day, seven days a week, make their agenda to attack the president with lies. When you see your job as a journalist not to report the truth but to actually promote propaganda you are an enemy of the truth and that makes you an enemy of the american people it's not the media it's the lying media Wir haben noch keine körperlichen Angriffe erlebt. Leute rempeln uns an, bespucken uns manchmal oder zeigen uns den Finger. Das ist nicht schön, aber trotzdem ist die Grundstimmung doch sehr, sehr aggressiv und aufgeheizt. Und man muss befürchten, dass er eben auch das Schlechte bei seinen Wählern anstachelt noch und die sich vielleicht dann ermutigt fühlen, auch übergriffig zu sein. Also es gibt Kollegen von uns, vor allem amerikanische Kollegen, die ohne Bodyguards in so eine Veranstaltung gar nicht mehr reingehen. Tonight. I stand before you to officially launch my campaign for a second term as President of the United States. Thank you. I'm so sorry, we are stuck in tremendous traffic. So I'm about five, I guess I'm about five minutes away. I'm sorry about that. All right, thanks, man.
There's very little global travel by American citizens. The people of the United States have a level of myopia, which people like Donald Trump have totally capitalized on. Do you see what I mean? Because if you don't travel, it's easy to demonize. It's easy to create xenophobia. And so he's been very successful at that. A caravan of more than a thousand Central Americans, men, women, and children, is traveling across Mexico tonight. Will anyone in power do anything to protect America this time? Or will leaders sit passively back as the invasion continues? Well, thank you very much, everyone. Large, well-organized caravans of migrants are marching toward our southern border. Some people call it an invasion. It's like an invasion. Die Tatsache, dass solche Vokabel genutzt werden in solchen Situationen, ähm, das finde ich außerordentlich beunruhigend. Weil man unabhängig davon, dass in den USA es auch ein großes Problem mit illegaler Einwanderung gibt, ähm, auch ein solches Thema genutzt wird, um zu polarisieren, um auf der einen Seite Leute zu stigmatisieren und auf der anderen Seite Leute aufzuhetzen, sie zu mobilisieren, sie zu aktivieren, weniger für ein Thema, sondern vielmehr für eine Person. Und das ist eine Art Politik zu machen, der ich nicht nur nichts abgewinnen kann, sondern die ich für echt gefährlich halte. One of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign, uh, in, in the midterms, that here, this, here we go. That, well, if Let's you don't go. mind, Let's Mr. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, I, Mr. President, I consider it to be an invasion. As you know, Mr. President, the caravan was not an invasion. It's a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. Thank you for telling and me that. Uh, why, why, did you, why did you characterize it as such? Uh, because and, I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But do you think that you demonized immigrants not in this election no, to try I to keep... Them, I want them to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. You know, they have to come in, Jim, through a process. I want it to be a process. They're hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of you miles away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much better. If I, if I okay, may ask one enough. other question. Mr. Acosta is asking a question about the Russian investigation. He's growing frustrated. He wants the microphone taken from him. And so there's a scene where Acosta is moving his hand to protect the microphone. So if, I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, are you worried? Of, that's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. President. That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? He declared the press the enemy of the people, and they said they were the opposition party, and they had a war going on with the press. They said they were at war. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Immigrant families were to be separated at the border. Small children, um, including children around the age of two, were placed collectively in cages. The design of that policy was actively to discourage uh, migrants coming from southern countries south of the American border uh, to make the journey to the United States. What we saw today was unconscionable. No child should ever be separated from their parent. This was one of the first of a number of congressional trips, but it was particularly remarkable because it raised the eyebrow or created some ire for this president. These were all women of color. They were young women of color. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez hat dann, und das war eine besonders starke Situation, vor dem Kongress ausgesagt über ihre Erfahrungen und hat gesagt, wenn all dieses passiert in einer Lagerhalle, wo Menschen in Käfigen äh, gefangen gehalten werden, und dort ist die amerikanische Fahne an der Wand. Worst about this, Mr. Chairman, 
was the fact that there were American flags hanging all over these facilities, that children were being separated from their parents in front of an American flag. Talk is cheap to criticize the man who has the executive control when you really haven't done anything, when you were a bartender six months ago, which is Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, and you have the goal to lecture the man who 63 million Americans voted for, go home and sort out your districts, clean them up, and then come back, back and lecture me. Tonight I have a suggestion for the hate-filled extremists who are constantly trying to tear our country down. They never have anything good to say. That's why I say, hey, if they don't like it, let them leave. Let them leave. The men and women who were attending, the supporters of the president, uh, started chanting the same, started chanting something like, send them back. And um, it was uh, striking. Here's what the president tweeted yesterday. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came? The countries, in quotes, that Congresswomen uh, Ayanna Presley and Rashida Tlaib and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are from, that country is the United States of America. Once he went after the Congresswoman and he tweeted out, go back to the country that you originally came from, I said, okay, that's enough for me. They told my grandmother that 100 years ago in this country. That is a racist nativist trope, okay? And that's designed to split and divide the country. That's him as a demagogue trying to become a tribal leader of one part of America to win an election and to promulgate policy, okay? That's full-blown racism. That is enough for me. city of El Paso, Texas, used to have extremely high rates of violent crime, one of the highest in the entire country, and considered one of our nation's most dangerous cities. Now, immediately upon its building, with a powerful barrier in place, El Paso is one of the safest cities in our country. Simply put, walls work and walls save lives. Breaking news, a deadly mass shooting at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas. AK, somebody's got shot. The police department there tweeting a few moments ago that, quote, the scene is still active. Witnesses say they heard pops of gunfire, people screaming and running to get out or hide in the store. Initial reports say the gunman was using a rifle. I wasn't really paying attention, but I heard do, do, do. And then it went do, 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 like closer together. I told him there's a shooter and we took off running towards the back of the store. The suspect allegedly told investigators he wanted to shoot as many Mexicans as possible. The shooting in El Paso targeted Mexican-Americans and just people who had brown skin. You have a shooter who said he was purposely targeting them. And the way that the shooter spoke about the people he was targeting is so similar to the ways we've heard President Trump and many Republicans talking about immigrants. Es war ein junger Mann, der motiviert durch Donald Trump ein Manifest schreibt, darin ja nicht nur auf Trump Bezug nimmt, sondern zum Teil wörtlich Formulierungen aus Tweets von Donald Trump übernimmt. This attack is a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. They are the instigators, not me. I am simply defending my country from cultural and ethnic replacement brought on by an invasion. Beto O'Rourke is tired of the media asking him whether he thinks the president is racist. He believes everything is as obvious as the circumstances that surround us. You don't think the president should come here. Why? I was just talking to somebody, listening to a woman who came up and said hello to me, and she said, why is he coming here when he hates us? 
Um, she's reflecting the fact that he described Mexican immigrants. This is a town of Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals repeatedly has warned of an invasion, trying to make us afraid of those who do not look like the majority of this country. He's described human beings as an infestation, which you or I might describe cockroaches or termites, but, but not human beings. And, and he is responsible for the hatred and the violence that we're seeing right now. Utterly outrageous. The things that have been said about this president, about his family, about the people who worked for him, like myself, are truly despicable. This man, 24 hours a day for three and a half years, has been called a racist, an anti-Semite, a bigot, an Islamophobe. None of it is true. When you have no argument, when you know that your policies will not win elections, what do you do? You say, ah, you're a racist, you're a Nazi, you're a fascist, you're responsible for Charleston, you're responsible for El Paso. I think it's definitely the case that since Trump has been president, since he's started with a lot of this hateful language, that hate crimes against a number of groups are all increased, especially white supremacist violence has spiked uh, in the United States. self-absorption is so monumental and it really comes through in these moments of national tragedies and uh, you saw it uh, in that hospital scene in El Paso, Texas, uh, you know, that even, uh, you know, an orphaned baby couldn't, you know, bring out uh, the person inside Donald Trump. He's in the hospital with Melania Trump and he's standing there with a baby that's just lost two parents and he's got his thumbs up. He doesn't realize the difference between being at the Pierre Hotel at a fundraiser with elites and sitting there with a young child whose parents have just been murdered. How long are you going to be there? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So you'll meet me in front, sir? You're going to take me home? Yeah, you're taking you're me to Manhassan, gonna, right? Long Island, right? Yeah. 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 What an insecure guy, right? I mean, I feel almost bad. It's politics, they're only Welcome all of you here today. We are glad to have with us here today, Andy Scaramucci. So, Trump is a complete asshole. And people that voted for him said, okay, I want to shake up Washington. Let's hire a complete asshole. He is a systemic danger to the society. We can survive a recession. No problem. It's like a bone break. We've had 12 of them since 1901. What we cannot survive as a society is a tearing of the racial fabric of the society, an annihilation of what we stand for, a divided America. The first name of the country is united. Politics isn't about unifying. Politics is about who wins the vision competition. This is democracy. In a democracy, it's a car race. And we have to see who has the fastest car. We're going to meet in the studio. Oh, in the studio? Yeah, because we got, at least we've got chairs there. Okay. You, know, you know what? Don Crow has no engineer. He doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, all right, it's going to go in 31st. OK, super, thank you. All right, bye. The Democrats wish to begin the impeachment of the most successful president since Ronald Reagan. We will have investigations and questioning that are worthy of the Constitution of the United States. Trump is being impeached because he is the most successful anti-Democrat president we have had in our lifetimes. He's being impeached because they can't stop him at the ballot box, they can't stop him in the media. They can't stop him on Twitter. They can't stop him on Facebook. They can't stop him in Russia. They can't stop him in Ukraine. They can't stop him anywhere. So they're going to try to impeach him. We have a president. That's how he got elected. He used fear, division, cruelty. 
and pretty much anyone who differs in any way is thought is othered or you know like this gentleman fake news has basically pitted Americans against one another by race religion ethnicity uh, sexuality everything you could think of we think the same thing I mean we could I'm amazed by I just amazed I mean, tell that me. you can tell, live in such a bubble what the it's thing just is like is that wow. liberals just this is the liberal argument they just say they're amazed and then they offer no input and then they run away when the facts come out. You guys get your information from fraudulent Where sources. Where do you get your information from? Uh, not from New York Times, not from CNN, not from MSNBC, Where do you not from all those it? places. I, ask you where you get it? I get it from places that you think are conspiracy theory networks like because Breitbart, they tell the truth. Alex Jones. Which one? Breitbart, Fox News, and you know a whole bunch of social media independent people. Trump, in his conversation with the Ukrainian president, said, look, we have a few things to offer, fatal weaponry, and you should be invited to the White House, but we would like you to do something for us. And what he wanted the Ukrainian president to do for, quote, us, was to investigate the involvement of the former Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, uh, who served as a board member of uh, a company that was Ukraine-based. The president was alleged to have misused his office and to have done so by asking a foreign leader, in this case the president of Ukraine, to investigate a rival. But the idea of President Trump trying to bribe Ukraine for an investigation into the Bidens is not existing. I know that members of this committee frequently frame these complicated issues in the form of a simple question. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, with regard to the requested White House call and the White House meeting, the answer is yes. Also, heute hat ein Schlüsselzeuge Trump schwer belastet, der EU. Botschafter Sondland, der ja ein Mann ist, den Trump ins Amt gehievt hat, hat ihn schwer belastet und quasi die Anklage der Demokraten untermauert, dass Trump sich des Amtsmissbrauchs schuldig gemacht hat. If you weren't fake news, you'd cover it properly. I say to the ambassador in response, I want nothing, I want nothing, I want no quid pro quo. Tell Zelensky, President Zelensky, to do the right thing. So here's my answer. I want nothing. I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. Tell Zelensky to do the right thing. Then he says, this is the final word from the President of the United States. I want nothing. Thank you, folks. Have a good time. I'm going to bed. Man hat noch einmal gesehen, auch in der Art und Weise, wie diese Debatte geführt wird, wie sehr der amerikanische Präsident polarisiert, und zwar auf beiden Seiten, in die eine wie auch die andere Richtung. Und das hat wirklich dazu geführt, dass über Wochen die Vereinigten Staaten so sehr mit sich selber beschäftigt gewesen sind, dass sie im Grunde genommen ausgefallen sind für viele internationale außen- und sicherheitspolitische Fragen, für die sie dringend gebraucht werden. The Ukraine scheme and the president's lies about it and the eventual impeachment was taken very seriously uh, by, by the big networks, by the CNNs and the New York Timeses of the world. Whereas on Fox's talk shows, it was treated like a joke. It was treated like a personal attack against Trump. The president did absolutely nothing wrong, nothing. The Democrats, the media, they are just outright lying to you again. The Trump triple step is in full effect once again. What is it? Lie, deny, defy. 
I think that what President Trump was doing as it related to President Zelensky was illegal. He was using the powers of the presidency to influence the political campaign. He got caught doing it. You know that the well is very deep. You know there's a whole list of things that he's done similar to that. And so they went after him. It has been said through the history of all impeachments, and we haven't had many, that an impeachment must never be partisan. It must never be a, an act by one political side. It must have some kind of consensus. And as we saw in the votes, especially in the Senate, it was completely partisan. It was a party vote, uh, and it was the exploitation of a constitutional weapon used for partisan purposes. the impeachment trial? It's a scam. It's, it, it is political. They're just trying to, it, it, it's just a, a further continuation of the Mueller investigation. It is complete hypocrisy. Adam Schiff is a liar. Um, Nancy Pelosi, um, they, they, honestly, under the United States Constitution, they are considered the domestic threat. They need to be arrested, they need to be charged, they need to be arrested, and they need to face a trial, a fair trial, have proper representation, and when found guilty, I'm sure there's a Navy Yard arm we can string a rope on and hang them for treason. Well, that's a fact. I hope they get lynched. I honestly hope they get lynched. And you know why? Is it's fake it's not real they're taking an innocent man that has done nothing but good for our country and they're they're, they're hanging him out there and just lying against them period people are not going to take take it any longer we're at a breaking point this is this is the peaceful demonstration right before a breaking point and we will see a civil war if president trump is not elected in 2020 a civil war a civil war an actual civil war the way they're trying to take away our rights, the Democrats in this country, the way they're really taking away our liberties, it, we, we need a civil war to stop them. That's what it seems like. Please welcome the President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. registered independent um, but it's there's no there's no middle ground at all anymore and how comes I don't know it's interesting I think it's the 24-hour news cycle I think that I've seen with within my own family people that watch Fox News um, the way the, it's it's not what they're saying it's the way that they say it the level of anger and maybe they would say passion or whatever they get so fired up about it it's the way that we talk about it and even on cnn where it's like they talk and they say it over and over and over again and it's like beaten into your system it's 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 not healthy it's really bad how many children have you aborted today oh yeah you pigs! Killer. You're pigs in a pig pen! Pigs in a pig pen! Baby, Baby killers! You laugh when your next grandchildren is loved in a fucking test tube, right? 
Republicans are agreeing four hours by 51 votes to let him break the tie. Debate. So, yes. uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the Democrats have said this is foreign interference in soliciting in the election. I think it was I think it was inappropriate and wrong for the president to do what he did, and I think it was proved. But the, but the question is whether you apply capital punishment to every offense. And in this case I think the answer is no. Senator Lamar Alexander said in his statement that what the president did was inappropriate. The Democrats did prove their case. Do you agree, and what's to stop the president from doing it again? I think Senator uh, Alexander probably spoke for where most Americans are. Most Americans would like to pick their own president unless it's absolutely necessary not to. But having said that, I accept it for uh, What's your name, bud? David Feldman. Feldman? Yes. Almost certainly, there's not going to be any witnesses or documents as part of this trial in the aftermath of Senator Lamar Alexander's decision to vote against moving forward on witnesses. Oh, all right, grab over here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm All right, in our time right now. Sorry. Lamar Alexander said the president said it's inappropriate. I said from the beginning, I think they were, it, it was not a perfect phone call and uh, was elements that were not entirely appropriate. But. Okay, I mean, and why no witnesses? Uh, because they, they don't add anything that uh, is necessary at, at this point. How can you find out the truth? when you cannot hear witnesses. That is the concern from Democrats saying, let's get all the information out there. Republicans say even the information out there that John Bolton is reported to have is included in his book is still not impeachable, so what's the point? The president tweeted, game over. Is he right? Is the game over? The game is over. I mean, this is only a matter of time before they decide, uh, before the president is acquitted. It's not anything, it's just we're sort of uh, it's a celebration because we have something that just worked out. I mean, it worked out. We went through hell unfairly, did nothing wrong, did nothing wrong. I've done things wrong in my life, I will admit. Not purposely, but I've done things wrong. But this is what the end result is. Take that home, honey, maybe we'll frame. It's the only good headline I've ever had in the Washington Post. I tell you. But every paper is the same. Does anybody have those papers? Does anybody have them? Because they're really uh, like that. Donald Trump called me a couple of times to complain about stories. He knows that the press is not necessarily held in high esteem, and he, he performs best when he has an enemy. And so if he, uh, he needs to attack someone, it's very convenient for him politically to attack the press, uh, because the press, as is typically the case in a democracy, is not, is not a beloved institution. Because in the nature of doing our jobs, uh, obviously we'll end up alienating people. In the United States, there is very little trust of the media. And I, I think it's, that's a big problem. Um, there's, there's a huge portion, maybe 40%, who, who really won't believe anything. Iraqi television has just confirmed that Qasim Soleimani, a former general in Iran's Revolutionary Guard and a commander of the Quds Force, has been killed in a rocket attack apparently initiated by the United States. The Pentagon announced tonight that the attack was a U.S. airstrike. Right before this uh, strike was confirmed, Trump uh, called up Sean Hannity, told Hannity all about it, 
And then Hannity went on his show uh, and delivered uh, the, basically Trump's talking points, Trump's view of the situation. Tonight, the world is safer as one of the most ruthless, evil war criminals on earth has been brought to justice. We'd like to pray over him. And we know we are people of prayer. So will you stretch your hands and pass on um, President Trump? These are some of your greatest faith leaders. They would love to pray over you. Pastor Jensen's going to start. Apostle Maldonado. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for this nation that was born in 1776. We pray in 2020 it would be born again. We pray for your spirit to move across our nation and we humble ourselves and we pray. We repent of personal sins, national sins. And we humbly Trump is basically the great cultural warrior of our time. He is a purveyor of television. He's absorbing all the information coming in from the TV, and he's made a decision that he is going to be the red tribal leader. He goes down to Miami. He's in front of a group of evangelicals and a group of religious leaders, and he says, God is on our side. Lord, I thank you that America didn't need a preacher in the Oval Office. It did not need a professional politician in the Oval Office but it needed a fighter and a champion for freedom. And Lord, that's exactly what we have. I thank you, Lord, that he doesn't claim to be perfect, but he is passionate. He's passionate for the, to stop the merciless killing of the unborn. And so send your power in your presence to touch this president. Show him who you are. Show him your love. And Lord, do something that the pundits on TV and the news anchors will be amazed at how great America is because God is great in America again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A SARS-like virus which has infected hundreds in China has now reached the United States. A deadly and contagious virus from China has made its way into the U.S. Earlier today, President Trump weighed in trying to calm the fears. We have one person uh, right now, as you know, and quarantined, and uh, we got lucky actually, but uh, we're in great shape. We have, uh, CDC did a fantastic job, immediately got the person. And we think we're in good shape. So do you think that people should be worried when they're no, traveling the airport? Not at all. I don't think they should be worried. It seemed to be an incredible disaster uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic. And in February and uh, up until mid-March, you had essentially the president uh, engaging in denialism, magical thinking, behind the scenes, a failure to adequately prepare. It's going to disappear. One day it's like Thank a miracle. God. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for this group holding up the arm. Yes, Lord. This stuff. You know, my uncle was a great person. He was at MIT. He taught at MIT for, I think, like a record number of years. He was a great super genius, Dr. John Trump. I like this stuff. I really get it. People are surprised that I understand it. Every one of these doctors said, how do you know so much about this? Maybe I have a natural ability. Maybe I should have done that instead of running for president. But you know what? Uh, what they've done is very incredible. I understand that whole world. I love that world. I really do. I love that world. Hydroxychloroquine. 
so chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. It's shown very encouraging, very, very encouraging early results. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. When you look back at that period, February and March, what the president was conveying was so much different than what he knew privately and what he was saying to Bob Woodward. That leads a lot of people to criticize his early response and say that the, this country could have been much better than where it is right now had the message been different coming from the White House. This president is shamefully uh, responsible for killing uh, his fellow citizens, for killing Americans. Why? Because he did not take this crisis seriously, you'll recall that very much at the beginning, he completely wiped uh, the facts off the table. He poo-pooed it. He compared it to the flu. He listened to every denier um, of the gravity of this disease. Yes, we are live from the swamp, the sewer that is Washington, D.C. Tonight, I can report the sky is absolutely falling. We are all doomed. The end is near. The apocalypse is imminent, and you're going to all die, all of you, in the next 48 hours, and it's all President Trump's fault. Or at least that's what the media mob and the Democratic Extreme Radical Socialist Party would like you to think. They are now sadly politicizing and actually weaponizing an infectious disease. Okay, quick question. Ladies and gentlemen, what's the greatest threat to our country, Bernie Sanders or the coronavirus? No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. What do you think the biggest threat to this country is? The coronavirus? There's no question. It's exactly right. Bernie Sanders is by far and away the greater threat. tonight is a special man, beloved by millions of Americans, Rush Limbaugh. Thank you for your decades of tireless devotion to our country. Rush Limbaugh is maybe the most unlikely political force in history. WABC News Talk Radio 770 in New York, Rush Limbaugh with yet another excursion into broadcast excellence. What Rush Limbaugh sort of stumbles upon is this conservative audience that had been very frustrated with that old media landscape. And they feel like the news doesn't reflect their values. When it talks about their values, it maligns them, it puts them down. And so, Limbaugh comes along and they say, thank God, we finally have a voice. There is someone who's going to fight back for us. Let's hit Berkeley. Let's hit Harvard. Let's hit Yale. Yale escapes. We miss. Ah. Rush Limbaugh is a conservative. The vast majority of these hosts, in fact, will exaggerate their beliefs. They will hyperbolize what they're saying. They will make claims that are, you know, bigger and, and bolder. We're not talking about a local city councilman. We're talking about the president of the United States. Almost 20% of the American people think he's a Muslim. And there is confusion over the identity of Imam Obama. I find this... <laughs> I, mean, I, I find it Twilight Zone-ish. 
the average talk radio host, who wakes up in the morning and says, what's the best show we can do today? And they're not journalists. When they get called out on spreading something that isn't true, that they found on some internet you know, rumor, or they saw somebody tweet it, and they never bothered to verify it, they say, well, you know, I'm not a journalist. I'm a talk show host, or I'm an entertainer. And Rush, I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And in 1996, they launched with Fox News. Fox News is fair news, yeah. And they're trying to get that audience that has flocked to Limbaugh. And thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hello, a little bit later on. And eventually it surpasses CNN. Um, and it becomes the juggernaut in cable news. Those Limbaugh listeners, now they have a conservative television network to turn on at night. They flock to Limbaugh for a reason, and now they flock to Fox News. Right. You know, and here I listen to Steve, and I listen to Hillary, and I listen to Allen, and I listen to all these liberals. They have, and Rosie, they've lied about the proposal. Trump watches at least six hours of Fox News a day, but but he does that uh, sometimes by fast forwarding, sometimes by skipping through the ads, sometimes by having it on in the background. So he's consuming Fox all day long. The sun is still rising. God's grace is still shining. And my fellow Americans, the best is yet to come. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you very much. The question of the Republicans and why they have stuck with him is one of the more striking aspects of the Trump presidency uh, because, in fact, they folded. For Republicans, it's very hard to go against Donald Trump. He commands total loyalty from his party. The moment a Republican criticizes him, he's up on Twitter tweeting to his more than 80 million followers why, uh, why this person is a, quote, rhino or Republican in name only. Look at the transformation of Lindsey Graham, the senator from South Carolina, who ran against Trump in 2016, who called him a kook. I'm not going to try to get into the mind of Donald Trump because I don't think there's a whole lot of space there. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. And I'm a Republican and he's not. So Lindsey Graham says to me, please, please, whatever you can do. And he gave me his number and I found the card. It, I wrote the number down. I don't know if it's the right number. Let's try it. 202. 228. Or if all else fails, you can always give your number to the Donald. This is for all the veterans. And now Lindsey Graham has become one of his uh, chief public cheerleaders who plays golf with him uh, nearly every weekend. Best speech. Great speech. Brilliant, Mr. President. Absolutely brilliant. Reagan has. What you did was awesome. Thanks. Wonderful. Mr. President. What do you think about the speech? Mr. I think it was his best. Um, it was compelling in terms of how good the economy is, that every segment of American life economically is better. African American and Hispanic wages are up, lower income wages are growing, and uh, from a military point of view, our military has been rebuilt. Uh, I think terrorism uh, is on the run, so I thought it was an optimistic speech. It was hard hitting. Hemingway, frame what you heard tonight for the past hour and well, 15 minutes. 
That was a masterful speech from President Trump. He a Trump advisor said, you know, the president missed an opportunity here. He had a chance tonight with a deeply divided country watching. Chips at sea. My name is Jeff Angelo. Need to know with Jeff Angelo. Welcome to Iowa Caucus Day. It is a big battle. There, there's an ideological battle going on among the Democrats right now about appealing to America's heartland versus the coasts. I'm getting a lot of emails that say this is a racist dog whistle. When you say heartland, you mean white people. I thought, wow. <laughs> but that's uh, the narrative that these candidates get caught up in. And boy, it is tough for them to shake it. 10.30 at News Radio 1040 WHO. What's going on in politics at this point is what I call a working class revolution. I think for a long time, Americans have thought that the politicians in D.C. don't represent their interests anymore. Whether they think that it's just because of the donors or uh, they get caught up in, in other fights that are irrelevant to the daily lives of people. And they want a candidate to go in and disrupt Washington, D.C. and enact an agenda that's important for working people. to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. And that's so what we are saying, Pete, is maybe it's a time for the working class of this country to have a little bit of power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contrib contributors. Hey, are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? In terms of who can beat Donald Trump, NBC did a poll yesterday. It says Joe Biden is best equipped to beat Donald Trump. That's what your poll said. I was surprised that uh, Michael Bloomberg had a rival standing next to him accuse him of referring to an employee as a horse-faced lesbian. That language was uh, unusual. <laughs> At the beginning of the debate. We're not yeah. used to that. Uh, that was pretty raw and personal. We have Mayor Buttigieg, we have Senator Klobuchar giving their votes to the person who's not popular, to Biden. I'm not a fan of Bernie Sanders, he's a socialist, but he is the front runner and it looks as if the establishment is going to come together to try and steal the Democrat nomination from him. So ironically, today's theme is going to be how undemocratic the Democrats are. Bernie Sanders would have been, I think, uh, Donald Trump's chosen candidate because uh, he could have so easily uh, bounced his views off of what he would have considered, you know, the socialist, uh, anarchist views of a Bernie Sanders. That would have been much easier for this president. The American population is coming out to turn out for Joe Biden. You see the deeper the shading in these states. The but tonight, I tell you with absolute confidence, we're going to win the Democratic nomination. And we are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of this country. We are better than this moment. We are better than this president. So get back up and take back this country, the United States of America. There's not a single thing we can't do. Ich kann mir nicht helfen. Für mich ist Biden ein Kandidat der Vergangenheit, der in seinem Wahlkampfstil und in seinen Inhalten ähm, immer wieder zu erkennen gegeben hat, dass er nicht auf der Höhe der Zeit ist. 
Und ich sehe darin gewaltige Risikofaktoren, sowohl in seiner politischen Vergangenheit als auch in seiner Mentalität, seiner Gegenwart, seinem Stil. Für einen Wahlkampf gegen einen republikanischen Amtsinhaber, der das politische Gespür eines weißen Heiß hat. My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. And these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things as we get approval. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. People were just expecting more out of this Oval Office address. The market alone was expecting uh, some sort of you know, specifics about economic measures that the White House and the administration would take. And you saw uh, the stock market the next day drop 10 percent. So they just did not feel reassured. And um, I think that was the opposite of what he intended, uh, but it is what happened. The other thing that I think was difficult for him was the fact that he was trying to blame it on outside forces, describing this as a foreign virus and so on. I mean, a virus doesn't have a nationality, doesn't have a passport. Uh, you know, it can affect anybody, uh, Democrat, Republican, German, American, uh, what have you. for this press conference in terms of what's going to be asked uh, at the we expect the, the top questions uh, for this president to be where are the tests that has been a question all week and speaking of dr fauci as president was saying to unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today i am officially declaring a national emergency two very big words The president himself said he's likely going to be undergoing a coronavirus test. I mean, can you imagine uh, what that's going to be like for the, uh, the United States or even the whole world if it comes back that the president of the United States tests positive for the coronavirus? I think that would tell a lot of people around the world how serious this is. The president saying there during the press conference that he probably will or likely will uh, undergo a coronavirus test. You know, unfortunately, I'm home. We probably have 440,000 uh, cases and probably 15,000 deaths right now. But we're at the peak of the pandemic in terms of the number of deaths. And so we're getting we're registering about 17 or 1800 deaths a day for the United States and about five or six hundred for the epicenter, which is uh, my hometown, you know, New York City. Nervosität macht sich hier bemerkbar. Für die Vereinigten Staaten ist das eine neue Situation, zumal auch die Regierung inzwischen ja auf Knien durch die Welt rutscht und alle möglichen Länder, inklusive einiger, denen wir Entwicklungshilfe zahlen, um Unterstützung bietet, was Schutzmasken, die Ausrüstung für Ärzte und Medikamente angeht. Eine völlig neue Situation für viele Amerikanerinnen und Amerikaner. Covering both sides of the big issues. Need to know with Jeff Angelo on your radio. Monday, April the 6th, our leaders really got us emotionally prepared for what is going to be a bad week. You can't believe it's happening. Um, and I, I felt that way on 9-11. I watched on American television as the towers fell. And... 
you you couldn't believe your eyes. You had to come to grip with the fact that this is happening. You know, it, it's 2020, and we live in a modern age. And how is it that there is this disease that is sweeping through our country and killing people, and we have to close down our country? What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Go ahead. I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. Since he can't host these rallies, he's using the press briefing room as a form of a rally, and then he's celebrating himself by saying he has higher ratings than some of the television shows as a result of these rallies. But... Uh, or these pr press briefings. Gap. On January 30th. What did your administration do in February with the time that your travel ban bought A you? lot. What? A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. It we did a the lot. Look, look. You know you're a fake. You know that your whole network, the way you cover it, is fake. And most of you, and not all of you, but the people are wise to you. That's why you have a lower, a lower approval rating than you've ever had before, times probably three. The figure I look at is death. And death is going up now. Okay, no, and it's no. a thousand a day. If you look at death. Yeah, it's going up look. again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death. Yeah. Per, it's started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in Numerous categories uh, were lower than the world. Lower than the lower world? than what is that? Europe. Take In what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or the CDC is recommending that Americans wear a basic cloth or fabric mask? I don't think I'm going to be doing it. It's when you see how we've taken testing from a broken system that I inherited to having the best tests that anyone's made anywhere in the world. When the New York Times a list of uh, und darlegt, wie viele Äußerungen des amerikanischen Präsidenten nachweisbar falsch gewesen sind, aber sich irgendwann keiner mehr darüber aufregt, sondern sagt, ja, okay, was ist halt so, es ist ja, wir, man es im Grunde genommen akzeptiert und sagt, okay, das ist so. Aber ein nicht unerheblicher Teil der Bevölkerung, der Menschen, die da leben, das glaubt. Ähm, dann spaltet das die Gesellschaft auch immer mehr. He's got a very large contingent of conservative news media behind him who have told many lies to the American public. And they've suggested that this was a, a hoax on the American public and a plot by the Democrats to hurt the economy. This is happening in all directions, but it is especially extreme, especially vitriolic on the right, directed at Joe Biden and directed at other Democrats right now. We see it all the time on Fox News, a channel that often seems more anti-Democrat than pro-Trump. The media mob is full of liars. They have smeared, slandered, besmirched this president from the day he came down that escalator at Trump Tower with Melania Trump. They are propaganda outlets. They are state-run TV for the radical Democratic Extreme Socialist Party. They spread Endless lies, conspiracy theories, one hoax, one conspiracy theory after another. These are private companies that are very clearly in a race for eyeballs, which is to say for Nielsen ratings numbers uh, to this day. And they are also facing the competition and squeeze by the news that happens online. In a more polarized environment, they, uh, I think, see it as to their commercial advantage, actually, to attack the other, to create an enemy of the other. What it does to American communities is it increasingly makes uh, American neighborhoods, American communities, American neighbors uh, unable to speak to one another.
this president, he tweeted, liberate Virginia, liberate Minnesota, liberate Michigan. When that tweet landed, it seems like he was endorsing what those protesters were doing um, and also emboldening them. And suddenly you saw people arrive on the state house of, um, in Michigan, in Lansing, who were literally armed to the teeth. <laughs> Normalerweise ist man es gewöhnt, dass der Präsident eines so großen und wichtigen und mächtigen Landes versucht, Konflikte, die in seinem Land sind, zu begradigen, sie zu kontrollieren, sie einzuhegen. Dieser Präsident tut das Gegenteil. Er befeuert die Konflikte, weil er dies als ein Mobilisierungsinstrument begreift, um sich seine Mehrheiten zu verschaffen, sowohl was die Akzeptanz, die gesellschaftliche Akzeptanz seiner Entscheidungen angeht, aber sicherlich auch mit Blick auf die bevorstehenden Wahlen. I was born a free man in a free country. I want to continue to be free. I don't want a dictator telling me what to do. If a legislature passes a law, that's fine. I don't want a dictator telling me how to live my life or where to live my life. It's serious, but it's not, I mean, so is the flu, but I mean, yeah. we, don't, we don't close businesses. We don't, you don't kill a $22 trillion economy over, over, an, over a disease. I mean, this is crazy. Car accidents are dangerous. The flu's dangerous. Our economy, I know a bunch of people on store owners on video the beach. You know what? They're not opening their stores no more. What do you gotta say about that? Their lives and livelihoods are dying. I know people are killing themselves for this stuff. You know what? We're Americans. We're fighting for our republic. We're fighting against socialism right now. We don't want to kill small businesses. We don't want to have to depend on big government for everything. the type of broadcasting that Fox News does, where viewers are sort of taught to question everything, offers a breeding ground for conspiracy theories that are spread through either the dark web or through subcomponents of uh, platforms like Reddit and others, um, and then amplified into another bigger audience by people like Alex Jones that frankly then incite violence. And I want to go overthrow China and hang Xi Jinping's ugly ass as well. You attack us with weapons, you die! That guy shouldn't be fired. He should be arrested on war crimes of bioweapons. And after he's convicted, hang his ass by the neck until dead. Alex Jones uh, leads InfoWars, which is an extreme con uh, conspiracy theory network. There's anti-Semitism, there's hate, there, there's, there's racism, all these different aspects that come through on the InfoWars show. Uh, and, and Alex Jones in the Trump age has become more mainstream because Donald Trump went on InfoWars as a candidate and praised Alex Jones. Uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. And it goes to show that the president, the now president, uh, links into these shadowy and dangerous conspiracy theory channels, and that's partly how he maintains his base. It's a bio attack, but they made an agreement with Obama and Hillary and those and Fauci that shipped them the weapons. Kill the Chinese spies. Kill them now. I want them dead. No more games. I want Trump to issue death warrants now against all these people. I want them killed. I want them dead now.
Well, you got him down, man. Let him breathe at least, man. I can breathe. The fact that for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, the country had to see a human being's life snuffed out. I think was traumatizing. Is traumatizing. And to watch for 8 minutes and 46 seconds a human die, that does something to your soul. And I think it did something to the American soul. And it brought people to the streets in a way that in modern American history, since the 60s, we have not seen. I mean, I, I, I watched the George Floyd film, the eight minutes and 46 seconds. And what I, first of all, it was horrific to watch. I'm hopeful that it will inspire a movement for peaceful change. Okay, fuck. Um, all right. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Das war eine relativ unvermittelte Morddrohung des Präsidenten. To many Americans, uh, even those who disagreed with the looting and were uncomfortable with the looting, the fact that an American president was seeming to call for protesters to be shot just seemed like a step way too far. What's up? Here inside CNN Center, we're just in the last 10 minutes. This is where we come to work every day. Journalists who are trying to tell the truth, trying to deliver information, something that appears to be some sort of smoke grenade that they're throwing inside CNN Center right now. They're kicking it back out, guys. This is live happening in front of your eyes. They expect these windows to be broken and people to advance. Uh, you have some people are laughing, some people are videotaping. They just threw something on fire, Chris, a firecracker. Yep. Something's on fire. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Spot and Doug. America has launched. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! So rises a new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions nominal. of a new generation continuing to... Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! The memory of George Floyd is being dishonored by rioters, looters, and anarchists. The violence and vandalism is being led by Antifa, and other radical left-wing groups who are terrorizing the innocent, destroying jobs, hurting businesses and burning down buildings. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Fuck John! Fuck John! My administration will stop mob violence, and we'll stop it cold. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property 
of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Das hat schlicht mein Vorstellungsvermögen überschritten. Also, dass es äh, in diesen Auseinandersetzungen Gewalt und Plünderung gegeben hat und dass der Staat dagegen vorgehen muss, äh, ist alles völlig unbestritten. Aber äh, dass man ankündigt, äh, Militär einzusetzen auf äh, den Straßen Washingtons, also das war jetzt nochmal eine neue äh, eine neue Erfahrung für mich, dass selbst da keine Grenze ist. Und das ist, ähm, das ist echt schon besorgniserregend. Mr. President, your thoughts right now? If the president is to lose, somebody will look back on June 1st and say that was a pivotal day for the president. And the notion that he's holding a Bible and he had to crush and repress an innocent protest using the American military, that could be the moment of no mass. Das ist aus meiner Sicht ziemlich nach hinten losgegangen, weil er ja da stand, als würde er die Bibel wie so ein Gimmick benutzen. Er hat sie ungelenk gehalten, er hat kein Wort gesagt, er hat nicht daraus zitiert. Kein Mensch glaubt, dass er besonders bibelfest ist. Also es war unglaubwürdig, es war Posing. Donald Trump kommuniziert nur noch mit dem harten Kern seiner rechtsextremen Unterstützer. Da geht es um äh, Bibelfestigkeit, um religiöse Ideologie, um die Kulturkämpfe der 90er Jahre, die die Republikanische Partei in die rechte Ecke gedrängt haben und den Versuch, all das zu verwischen, was Tagesnotiz ist, nämlich die Tatsache, dass wir über 100.000 Tote haben wegen Coronavirus, eine wirtschaftliche Situation, in der ein Viertel des Landes äh, arbeitslos ist und ein Präsident, der zunehmend die Kontrolle über seinen eigenen Kopf verliert. No man, no weapon Formed against, yes, glory is destined Everyday women and men become legends Sins that go against our skin become We live with this 24-7, 365 um, And I think what's different is You have black people who are tired You got white people who are tired of being cooped up And you have the world appearing to go to hell in the handbasket Except for the capital markets And people are frustrated And, and we finally have a vehicle to do something about it And I've been harassed, I mean, hundreds of times yeah. by the police. So. Walking home and people thinking that because it was always a white neighborhood, they want to know why you're walking in that area. He's polarized the nation. The anger and passion is up. Now, the Democrats can lose because there's also a culture war going on at the same time. You want to defund the police? American people don't want that. You want to knock down every statue in America, that Orwellian idea that we could erase our, our past? The American people don't want that. So he could win. Hello, everyone, on this day of prayer, where we try to understand God's plan in our pain. To George's family and friends, Jill and I know the deep hole in your hearts when you bury a piece of your soul deep in this earth. We have one of the most corrupt politicians in American history, Joe Biden, who's basically hiding in his basement, who's giving video uh, interviews, who's making constant mistakes, reading from a teleprompter. And then when he gives a speech, it's to an empty building, uh, it, to, to an empty crowd, again, making mistakes on a written script. So as one, Democrat analyst said on television recently, the Biden campaign will be fine as long as he doesn't leave his basement. Now is the time for racial justice. That's the answer we must give to our children when they ask why. 
because when there is justice for George Floyd, we will truly be on our way to racial justice in America. Joining us now, the executive vice president, Eric Trump. Uh, we know it's a little loud there in the arena where you are, Eric. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Hope you can hear me. Great to be on, John. What are you looking I forward can. to tonight? I can. The place is going absolutely crazy. Well, listen, we had over a million signups for this rally. It's a great way to spend Father's Day. You see the spirit in this room. It's unbelievable. I mean, people in this room, they bleed red, white, and blue. They love my father. The Tulsa, Oklahoma rally, it was a colossal failure because of him overhyping it and him saying there would be no seats unturned and they had a outside live event uh, planned that they ultimately had to break down the set and cancel. And he had 6,000 people inside a 19,000 person capacity uh, building. Stellte sich dann raus, dass da ein Haufen äh, junger und nicht mehr so junger linker Aktivisten auf TikTok diese ganzen Reservierungen äh, machten. Ich habe hier mit Studenten gesprochen, die hatten einige hundert Reservierungen pro Person. Das schien relativ einfach gewesen zu sein. So I got two tickets, but I totally forgot I can't make it for Friday. Where? Where? Where is everybody? Mr. Trump? You know, testing is a double-edged sword. When you test, of, when you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people. You're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. There was a rally in Tulsa, and President Trump said, uh, quote, I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. He was heavily criticized by I, that. I'm not doing this interview, I'm sorry. You're, you're constantly attacking the president. No. If you'd like to do this interview another day, if you want to ask questions about what the Democrats are doing negatively, we'll have the discussion. But I'm not doing this interview. Thank you very much. Stop attacking the president. You're not being a journalist. Alles Gutes. Vielen Dank. Tschüss. Bis nächste Mal. There is no way, zero, exclamation point, that mail-in ballots will be anything less than substantially fraudulent. There's absolutely no proof of that statement being anything near the fact. Donald Trump in 2020, uh, just as he did in 2016, has uh, embarked on a really extraordinary pre-election course of delegitimizing an election that he fears that he is going to lose. The reason why Twitter is checking him is that they're trying to get this right for posterity. He has sent out 18, 20,000 lies, and he's trying to suggest that mail-in ballots could be corrupted by a foreign entity or could be corrupted by the Democratic Party. There's no way if you had 100% voter participation in the United States, he could win the election. Okay, so the goal here is to try to suppress the non-white vote, enhance the white vote in his base to win the election of those swing states. This morning, the president, the sitting elected U.S. president, President Trump, has openly floated an idea uh, that has never happened in this country's history. That is delaying the presidential election, when, of course, his own term is up. We're only 92 days until this election, where you're the ultimate jury, and tonight, the conspiracy theorists on the left, you know, the ones that sold you the Russia hoax, the impeachment hoax, all of them are back in full gear, Hitler comparisons, bizarre fantasies about President Trump getting forcibly removed from office. They say the projected winner or the winner of the election. I don't want to see that take place in a week after November 3rd or a month or, frankly, with litigation and everything else that can happen, years, years, or you never even know who won the election. Millions of Americans are receiving 
mail-in ballots or going to vote early. How confident should we be that this will be a fair election? What are you prepared to do to reassure the American people that the next president will be the legitimate winner? This is all about trying to dissuade people from voting because he's trying to, con to scare people into thinking that it's not going to be legitimate. Show up and vote. He cannot stop you from being able to determine the outcome of this election. And in terms of whether or not when the votes are counted and they're all counted, that will be accepted. If I win, that will be accepted. If I lose, that'll be accepted. As far as the ballots are concerned, it's a disaster. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. This is Evidence not going to end well. Very, if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. And I'll tell and what, you what, what from mean, a common sense, does that mean you're I'll going tell to you what it means. people to take to it the It means screen? you have a fraudulent election. You're and sending you out 80 do? million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped to... These people aren't equipped to handle it, number one. Number two, okay. they cheat. They cheat. Mass you, homeboy! I'll fucking eat your fucking face off, motherfucker! You want a fucking piece? Turn it off! I'll fuck you off! Hey, hey! The real issue is, to what extent are we simply uh, demonizing our opponents instead of viewing them as opponents, uh, viewing them as enemies. Uh, and I think that we're dang moving dangerously in that direction where we don't just view our political opponents as political opponents, we view them as enemies to be destroyed. Uh, and will we get beyond that? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know. I think that there are deep fascist tendencies and that there are very much uh, elements that speak to the roots of how fascist systems are built. So I think this is frankly the most volatile time in American history, uh, in American constitutional history since the end of World War II. I do feel that uh, American democracy is in peril. When somebody's the president of the United States, the authority is total.